What's up, guys? It's Corey Russell. Billy Humphrey. And this is Gripped, Awakening the Grown in a Generation for Revival and the Return of the Lord. Let's go. My goodness, Season 2, Episode 10 this is of it. the Knowledge of God. And for this last episode, guys, I came out swinging. I got my denim jacket Bro, here. Bro, you look good. I'm looking good. And so I'm just trying to reach this generation. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get the Segway pastor back in the <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, we got to yeah. get him on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. We got to get him in here. So anyway, we're just coming out, <laughs> coming out swinging, man, for this last episode. This has been an amazing season, man. I am lit. I hope you are. And I hope your life's turned upside down and you're wrecked like we are. Yeah. And, uh. We've wanted to take these last two. We hit it. We hit Proverbs 2 on uh, on our last, on episode 9. And we want to kind of start there as we venture into some other aspects of this. Yep. Again, Proverbs 2, you want to treat this as your highway. If you receive my words. Yes. If you cry out for discernment. And if, and this is what I want to lock in on. If you seek her as silver and search for hers for hidden treasures. Yes, yes. He says you will find, he goes, you will understand the, the fear, fear of the, of the Lord, Lord and find the knowledge of God. And, and make the connection. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's right. And so my, my definition of the fear of the Lord, and I think we can do that. My definition, there, there's the general fear of the Lord that I believe God wants to increase in your life, which yeah. is the awareness of God. Yeah. Yeah. God everywhere. It's the consciousness of God. The awe, the reverence, yes. the wonder. That your bedroom and the prayer room are the same. Yeah. There's no sec sacred and secular set apart because we live before God yes. and he cares he's connected and he rewards accordingly yes, yes. that's the fear of the Lord yes, yes. and um, finding the knowledge of God growing in the spirit of revelation and so we've talked about a little bit and there's lots of other things we've done but we've talked about meditation praying pray reading the Bible yes we talked about a little bit and I want to get to some of this at the end we talked a little bit about the Holy Spirit and and the aspect of praying in the Holy Spirit. And I, I want to, and we talked a little bit about intercession, lifting up our voice. Yeah. Yeah. Spiritual hunger. I want to talk here at the beginning of this one on the power of fasting. Yeah. As it relates in your journey and growing in the spirit of revelation. For sure. Yeah. And I think, so for years, um, I would say before I got introduced to the house of prayer, um, I basically did, um, a, I do one big fast a year. And it was like, okay, that's what you do. You, you start yes. the year, 21 day fast or something like that. And it was, you know, rough, but you just did it. Yes. And, and I always, you know, I thought it was effect, effectual. I didn't quite get why, but I knew that there was a spiritual principle and, uh -huh. and I knew it was in the Bible kind of thing. And then when, whenever uh, I moved to Kansas City and, and I got connected with you and, and Mike and the crew there, it was not to do fasting as a big event. It was to do it as a lifestyle. Yes. And that was sort of like when the lights went on for me. Oh, you don't just do a big 20 day, 21 day fast or a 40 day fast once a year, once every few years. Do those. Those yes. are good. Those are, there's emphases. There's times you're yes. supposed to lean in fasting and praying, pushing other things aside. But the, the, to me, where the power in it is, when you condition yourself to do it weekly yes and that was the mind that was the mind blower that was the the game changer for me yes and so what mike challenged us to do in those days he said fast two days a week yes and and then once a month you're going to fast three that's right and so every month we were fasting nine or ten days nine to eleven days depending that's right even if there wasn't a uh special that's right. It's just what we did. And in the grace of God, I know people who have fasted three days a week yes. for long periods of time or every other day for long periods of some four days a week. Yes. But it, the point isn't so much how many days a week. The point is that you fast regularly. That's right. Every week. And, and so that became for me a habit that once a week, I'm not going to I'm not going to eat that day. I'm going to fast and I'm just going to take that time where I would normally be eating meals and I'm just going to I'm just going to pour that on the Lord. Yes. I'm going to do that with with prayer and Bible reading instead. And I would say virtually every day that I've ever fasted, I've not felt anything yes. special on that day except for hunger. Yes. <laughs> I got physically Absolutely. hungry. 
But the accumulation of all of those days, I, when I look back at how so often I've felt the spirit of revelation come on me, yes. the only thing I can attribute it to are the 20 years now of fasting every single week. Cause, cause what, cause, what would you say? No, this is, this is what we want to lock in on because, again, fasting doesn't earn anything from no. God. All right? What I love, and this is what the, why it's so important with the spirit of revelation, Fasting makes you vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fasting weakens your resistance to truth. Yeah. It, it makes you less awesome. That's in right. Yourself. It actually makes you, it, it weakens your resistance to truth. And this is what I've found <laughs> happen because we have so many strongholds. We have arguments, we have fortresses, and we're so used to living in our strength of our personality, of our gifting and of living in strength, and we we resist so much truth. What fasting does is it presents us to God as not awesome. And in that place of vulnerability and weakness, his word goes from a tapping hammer mm -hmm. into a sledgehammer. Mm -hmm. Now, not necessarily right in the moment. Sometimes right. it does happen. But the accumulation is the word of God begins to hit you and you start getting tender. Yeah. And when the word of God comes in deeper, that's the spirit of revelation. Yes. Is when he begins to shine upon you and now you feel words here. Yeah. Where before it couldn't get it couldn't get out of here. Yes. And now yes. you're feeling it when you read, as the father loved me, so I loved you. Oh my God, you love me. I know. And you feel it. And it's not because you earned it. This is what I say. Fasting doesn't earn anything to God. What it does is it makes you vulnerable. Yeah, more susceptible. More susceptible to what you've already received in God yes. so you can walk in it. Yes. It helps get your flesh out of the That's way. That's right. The thing that I, that I think for a long time for me, fasting, it, you know, there was this idea that, oh, the spiritual people fast. Yes. And that if you did a lot of fasting, you were spiritual or you were you know, extra in a, you know, spiritual way. And that is just hogwash. That's garbage. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. fasting isn't for the super spiritual. Fasting is for every believer, <laughs> every Christian. It said, Jesus said, when I'm taken away, when the bridegroom's taken away, then my disciples will fast. Matthew 9, he explains That's it. That's right. That this is normative for the Christian life, that there are, there's a natural rhythm by which we push away from the the meal table. We push away from food. And, and to be quite honest, the, the transaction, I don't quite get it. Mm -hmm. I push away from food and I push into the word. And there's a spiritual dynamic that happens to me that makes it more it's, encountering in my spirit. something about in your weakness. Yeah. His strength is made yeah, perfect. It, it, you access that in a, in a it, physical, tangible Your way. weakness your, your like physical weakness in a situation yeah. it accesses. It's the currency to receive because he comes and fills the low places. Right. And But the point is it doesn't make you super spiritual. No. It, there's no badge you get. You're not, oh, they're the fasting. No, no. Fasting is for everyone, all believers. And it gives us this place of vulnerability, the susceptibility. And, and, and it's in that place, that weak place, that he promises to meet us, which tells us a lot about God and what he values. Yes. He values weakness. Yes. He values humility. David said, I humbled myself yes. through Fast. prayer and fasting. That's right. And so it's just a critical component. It doesn't make you awesome. It actually makes you less awesome. I want to invite you. You know, this is our last episode of this season. I want to invite you to take, you know, take this season, this next you know, several months. And I would encourage you to go for a day a week. Yeah. Start with a lunch. Push. Say, God, would you let me go through a day? Mm -hmm. Push through it. I've found some of the, the, the most breakthrough happened. If I can get through one night, the hardest part is that six to nine at night. <laughs> we got our kids. They don't eat all their meals. You know, they still got some like peanut butter hanging from their chin or something. <laughs> and I just want to go there and give them a hug. Guys, it's not about, it's not even about trying to do everything. There's some seasons where I'll just, I'll take a couple of Cheez-Its to knock the edge off, <laughs> whatever. You know, whatever. He's over here judging me. But uh, <laughs> I am not. Okay, I'm just playing. I'm, I'm thinking you need to find the spoonful of honey. Yeah, I do spoonful of peanut butter me to too. help Glory me. Glory to God. And so the point is that it's about living in the spirit of fasting. And this is what I found is breaking through that night and yeah. getting into the next day. Yeah. Because you're a little wobbly. 
you're you're not you're 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 not thinking as clear. But there's something beautiful in that to where it, it really you're 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 being enjoyed by God, and you realize I really don't have anything to bring. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a goober. Here I am. I I have nothing to bring, and yet you meet me in this place. Guys, I want to say it to you emphatically. Regular fasting has expedited my growth in the spirit of revelation. Absolutely. It has. It, that's why it's called fast. It feels slow when you're doing it. They should call it a slow because when you're doing it, everything slows down, but it actually expedites, yeah. and it's a catalyst yes. in the spirit realm. Yeah. I don't understand all the dynamics, but it's true. It works. And here's I'm I'm sitting in your touch with this because I feel like it's something the Lord's invited me to over the years is to challenge the church to to jump in on yes. this get in on this, and we have um at, you know at this recording we don't really know how many thousands we have that are um, subscribed to the podcast but we know we've had up to a thousand before we started this season and and so we'll get our figures here soon but what if a thousand of you decided I'm going to now fast one day a week. Yes. What if what if this could be a catalyst for a thousand new fasting and praying people to seek Jesus in that place of weakness and vulnerability? He will meet us. And so I just want to ask you, if you don't do this once a week, would you make a commitment to do that right now? And and maybe start with one meal. Yes. Start with a meal and then in the grace of God, push to two meals and then three and take a day a week. And here's the thing about fasting. People say, well, I don't really have the grace to fast. Hunger is not an indication of a lack of grace. Hunger is an indication that you're doing it right. So in the grace of God, because of the promises of Scripture and leaning in for the spirit of revelation, would you make a commitment and just fast one day a week? Try it the rest of the year and see what God will do. Just watch what happens. That's the other thing I think Richard Foster said in Celebration of Discipline. He says he hated fasting because every time he'd get he'd fast, he'd get angry. And he told he <laughs> right. told the Lord, he goes, God, I hate fasting because every time I fast, I get angry. He goes, that's why I hate it. He goes, no, the Lord says, no, you're, you're not angry because you're hungry. You're angry because there's anger in you. <laughs> that's right. And fasting actually removes yes. all the stuff we barricade. And the real us comes to the surface. And it's in that place that the word of God delivers us, restores us, <laughs> renews us, dissects washes us, us dissects us, <laughs> cuts us, and the Word of God goes to work on you. Yeah. So anyway, get ready for that. It'll be awesome. So fasting's another big one. Critical. And then the other thing that I want to talk about, and, and it's 2 Corinthians 3. Yeah. And it, I, would, I would feel horrible if we did this whole season yeah. on the spirit of revelation and we didn't talk about 2 Corinthians 3 because yeah. this is critical for your process and growth in the knowledge of God. Yes. In 2 Corinthians 3, I want to give a little bit of backdrop. Paul is contrasting the old covenant and where Moses had spent those 40 days on Mount Sinai. Yep. And out of his encounter, he comes down the mountain and his face is shining. Yes. So because his face is shining, it's blinding everybody. He puts a veil right. over his face. Yeah to keep the people from looking at him. And Paul is going to use that and contrast it because Moses is carrying the Ten Commandments when he comes down. Yeah. So it's the it's the revelation of the ministry of what he calls the law or condemnation. And and he, he called it no glory. Yes. Yes. Paul he called says, that no glory. <laughs> he said it it pales <laughs> in respect to the glory of the new. Yes. And and Paul is going to contrast that and he's going to use this phrase and he's going to say now the Lord is the Spirit. And he's going to begin to say, Moses' face was shining, and he had the law that could call people to outward actions, but he couldn't deal with their internal right. motivations. Right. right. That was the weakness of the law. That's the weakness of the law. That's the weakness of the law. You can't change what's on the inside of a man. Right. You can't change the hard drive, what he desires and what he wants. You can give rules that expose. External boundaries that show you where you're broken. That's right. And expose the sinfulness in you. Yeah. But the, but Paul says it was weak and that now that glory that was shining on Moses' face, now through the new covenant, the veil has been removed yes. through Christ. Mm-hmm. And now the Lord is the Spirit. Yeah. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. 
Now, I love using that verse to dance harder and to wave louder <laughs> and get crazy. It's not what it's about, is it? It's about an <clears throat> internal renovation and transformation on the inside of you. It's freedom from the law of sin and death. It's the law of the liberty of life, the law of the spirit of life by whom you live in this higher plane of wanting God, of loving God, of pleasing God, and you want to. And he says, I'll finish this up and then I'll pass it to you. He goes, now the Lord, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, the spirit of the Lord, he goes, it's freedom. He goes, now the Lord is the spirit where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And then he says this phrase, he says, but we all, okay, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. He goes, he goes, we all beholding as in a mirror dimly, the glory of the Lord. We are being transformed. Here it is into the same image from glory to to glory, glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord transformed into the same image. I want to give you, and then I want you to talk about it. (laughs) It's a principle in scripture. It's called the beholding becoming principle. That as you behold Jesus through the word and through the Holy Spirit, you are transformed into the very image that you're beholding. Yes. What does that meant to you? Yeah, so it means everything. I, and I, I love that, that uh, the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So that's the liberty on the inside to not have to obey the lust of your flesh. Yes, yes. You're free. You've been freed. From having to obey the the law of the sin that is working in your flesh you can say no to that it's powerful romans 8 says the law of the spirit has made me free yes i mean that's the law of sin and death that's so powerful and that's why in christ you can actually have victory over sin so that's where he's that's where he's going and then he's describing the the progressive nature of that liberty this transformation right yes 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 and so the, this this idea that as we stare into the law of liberty of Christ, we Jesus. stare into the word, we stare into the face of Jesus, that we are being transformed, that that, that liberty is growing inside of us. Because yes. where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But uh, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. There is power that is actually being imparted with every time you gaze yes. into the word and into the face of Jesus. So what do we, what does that mean to me? What, it, 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 it's powerful because when I stare at the word, this is when we, this is why we meditate on the scripture. Yes. We get the verses before us and we stare at those verses. We will literally hold a single Bible verse in front of us sometimes for an hour. Yes. Sometimes for a day i've been looking at james 4 since sunday and today is what day is today for wednesday yeah yeah thursday i've been looking at james 4 that whole chapter for three or four days just staring at it just every single phrase and just letting it wash over me and i'm staring at it and the more i'm staring at it the more understanding of it i'm getting whereas i've probably read it 15 or 20 times through and then held on to certain passages light is hitting me yes because his word is light it's yes. truth and the more i look at it even even though sometimes it's just like nothing the more i'm looking at it light is penetrating me and it's changing me on the inside yes. and the power of the word of god the truth i'm knowing more of the truth through the spirit of revelation it's setting me more free yes. to obey the word and to say no to sinful temptation. Yes. So that would be the first way that I'm beholding. I behold Jesus in the word. That's right. Right? That's that's absolutely the thing that I want to hit. Yeah, we hit it, we hit it by the word. We got the word and we have the indwelling spirit. That phrase, now the Lord is the spirit. Friend, I I, I cannot the Holy Spirit is your tour guide into the revelation of Jesus. That's it. John 16, he will glorify me, okay? He will take the things that belong to me and he will make them known to you. 1 Corinthians 2, the spirit searches the deep Deep things things of of God God. and he has come to make known the things we have freely received by God. Holy Spirit searches the deep things of the Father and the Son and he's looking for someone to share them with. So when you have an open Bible, indwelling spirit, and you begin to close your eyes 
and begin to turn that Bible into dialogue and to look look to Jesus through the Holy Spirit to transform you yeah. and to change you. That every time you do that, I love the way Mike says it. He goes, it's like a computer code has lines of code. And every time you speak God's word back to God or whisper it or say something, I God, make me more like this. Give me that wisdom, God. Give me that humility and that meekness. Mm. A new line of code is drawn in your emotional mm. chemistry. It's drawn in your thought life. Now, you're not cognizant of it that much. This is the thing that I love about 2 Corinthians 3. It's the phrase, as in a mirror. Yes. As in a mirror. Which means in the ancient world, mirrors aren't like what we have right, today. Right, right. They were dim. You could it's, barely see. They weren't your... 4K. No, they weren't 4K. <laughs> They're not what you're seeing even right now. They were dim. Shined up platters, basically. Exactly. Pieces of metal. Exactly. And, and what Paul's saying is it's little. It's little bits. It's dim. It's little bits. But the power of consistency with a Bible and the indwelling spirit through time. Yes. When you keep showing up, the very reality that you're looking at, the very face of Jesus that you're considering and praying into and asking him to touch, in time, you, your internal life, your emotions, your thoughts, your desires are being transformed yeah. into that image. Right, right. You're being con conformed to the image of Christ, yes. transformed, becoming more like him. And, and it is really, it's this simple. Open your Bible, read the verse. And just camp there. Stare into it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. <laughs> what? You know? What? And then, in the, the beginning, beginning was the Word. It's that repetition. It's that repetition, getting it. The Word was with God. He was in, he, the he. word, he, the word. It, it's just hitting that thing over and over and over. And the power of the word of God, it begins to transform you. It, yes. It's, it's like, it's like radioactive waves. It's like, it's like, um, microwaves. You don't see it cooking the thing that you put in the microwave, but it's cooking you. It's cooking. And you wake up six months later, a year later. And you start feeling different, thinking different, desiring different. Yeah, that's how your mind gets renewed. Yes. But here's the thing I want to stress. You might know what we just said. You might know this. But if you don't do it, it will not work for you. Absolutely. It's just as simple as you have to do that simple, simple thing. It doesn't matter how many hours. You can do it in 10 minutes. If that's what you've got. If you've got a, say you've got a 30-minute slice of time, five minutes to sit down with him like we talked about last episode. 10 minutes to, to pray in the spirit and worship him. Yes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Sit on the Bible verses and, and then five mi minutes just to worship, to love. Look, that 30 minutes could be powerful if you'll do it daily. That's right. But you have to do it. You can't live vicariously through your favorite preacher because Bill Johnson does it and you listen to Bill preach about it. It doesn't, because Corey does it, and you've listened to Corey preach, it doesn't make it real for you. you got to do it. This is something I want to say, and then I want to give some closing thoughts of our last episode. Um, this is something that we really didn't hit in Philippians 3, that Paul said, I forget the things that are behind me, and I reach forward to those things which are ahead. Mm -hmm. That in your pursuit of the spirit of revelation, you need to forget your failures of yesterday come under the blood, but you also need to forget memories of maybe where you were five years ago yeah. or a year ago. The power of the pursuit is it's today. Mm -hmm. It's right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And constantly engaging the now, not living through YouTube videos, yep. podcast, listen to this. But if this is the end for you, I'm sad. Our purpose in yes, this is to right. throw logs on your, your fire. fire. If this is your fire, it'll be gone as soon as the podcast is over. Yeah, we're here to provoke you into something. That's right. And so I want to say that to you. Why are we... So I want to take these last you know, five minutes of, our, of this whole season. Why did we do this? Why did we take a whole season and go off on the knowledge of God? One, because it's the absolute screaming reality of the Word of God. Yeah. But number two, I want to say it to you. I believe in 2020, we crossed the threshold. The earth is in transition like no other time, and we are in an hour. And, and I want you to even share this Amos 8 word yeah. you're feeling. Yeah. And 
I because I, I I believe we're also talking to messengers, ones that the Lord wants to restore yeah. something in this hour, and that's why we did this. Yeah, Amos eight. So we alluded earlier in the season that uh, there was this day I woke up with the spirit of revelation resting on me, and it was Amos eight, uh, the famine of the hearing of the word of the Lord. He says, in that day, I'm going to release a famine. A famine of the hearing of the word of the Lord. Amos 8, verse 11. Which is weird because I've been on Amos 9, 11 about the restoration of the tabernacle of David. But Amos 8, this famine of hearing the words of the Lord. And I'm, I'm, I was sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, how are we in that right now? I wow. felt like it was Holy Spirit. He literally, wo I woke up and that was like, I heard two things. I heard you saying, <laughs> I could hear your voice saying, even the stork, even the stork knows her appointed times, but my people do not know my judgments. That's what I heard. Even the stork knows her appointed times, but my people do not know my judgments. And then I heard that uh, Amos 8, 11, a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. And, and what it does to my, to my soul is I'm saying, God, I don't want to be full of sound and fury signifying nothing. That's a line from Macbeth. Our friend Brian Kim has mm. been saying this for five years, that it's like the church right now is full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Mm. And could it be that we're in a moment of famine that the Lord is, he's, he's actually causing us to sense our need in a deep, deep way so that we will go hard fiery passionately into the knowledge of God. So we'll actually have something to say. Yes. We'll actually have a word from the Lord. We'll actually have the knowledge of him. And I was thinking about that Jeremiah 23. Yes. Where the prophets in, in Jeremiah, they, he said, if they would have stood in my counsel, they would have had a word from me. But because they didn't, they, they've said they have nothing to say. Absolutely right. He goes, stand in the council and hear the word. Mark my word and hear the word of the Lord so you can have something to declare to the earth. I think right now we must have messengers with the word of the Lord on their mouth. And it's not going to come cheap. It's not going to come quick. That's right. It's not going to come because we've got a big following on our Absolutely Instagram. Not. It's going to come because we've stood in his council. We've marked his word and we've heard from heaven. We've heard the word yes. of the Lord. We've gotten the spirit of revelation on us so that we can actually say what he's saying. Yes. And not just what we think the crowds want to hear. Deception is running rampant, and we need people. I, I think of the Jeremiah 315 shepherds. Yes. I will give you shepherds according to my heart, and the shepherds are going to feed people on God. Yeah, on the knowledge of God. I, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. We need people who have broken through the shallow, through the peripheral, through the bumper stickers, and through the T-shirts, and broken through into the living, experiential knowledge of God, revelation of Jesus, and we, and they are able to feed others with yes. real Bible verses, real clarity, real shepherds that do it with uh, with meekness, meekness and authority, yes. that bring forth weight, and that can feed people on the bridegroom heart of Jesus, yeah. feed people on him as king, as judge, as intercessor, as savior, as lamb. And they, they have fed on the buffet with many mundane hours, but yet the Lord breathes on it. Yeah. And you take that and it's going to feed a generation. I want you to be one of these people. Yeah. That's why we're doing this. I want to mark as many as the Lord will give us to say, go feed this, go go get it, go eat yourself, go get lost in it, say no to some other things, lock yourself away with God, and I promise you in the coming days, you will be useful to the Lord. Totally. Some of you that have platforms right now, there's so much pressure on you to have the next hot thing to say because there's so many people that want to hear, and, and there's got to be a place where you're unwilling yes. to share something that you're that you're not hearing. Yes. In other words, don't just feed the appetite of the masses because the masses want something new. Wait before him. Look into his eyes, stare into his word, and wait to hear what he will say so that you can declare it. And then once you declare it, it's the, it's the Habakkuk 2, then they'll run yes. who read the vision that God gives. But there's got to be this willingness to not say it if he's not yes. saying it. Yes, yes. 
And, and so I, I feel that deep in my own soul, like a, a commitment to not declare, hey, this is what the Lord's saying, uh, unless he's really saying unless it. Unless he's really saying it. Anyway, so that yeah. brings it, man. We we love you. We love you. We we truly love you. And and we're so honored to run with you yeah. in this podcast. We look forward to more running with it. But don't let but don't even at the same time become and I know we're we're stepping into this mode. Just don't be a consumer. Yeah. My fear is that this will be, man, that was a good podcast. Man, everybody get the podcast. And you actually don't do it. Yeah. Go do it. Yeah, and yeah. I promise you. God will meet you. Get you a group of three or four others. Listen yes. to the podcast together and then challenge one another. Pray into these things. Do it together with a group. Run together yes. and go forward for, for Jesus. Go forward in the knowledge Father, of God. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus yes. upon every person who will hear this release podcast. Release your spirit. Release the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Mark them, I pray. Wreck them, yes, I pray. God. And take them into that shoreless ocean of yes. the knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. We love you. God bless you.